This is the synthesis of indigo. What we're going to do here is we're going to do this quantitatively. And then we're going to do some qualitative experiments afterwards. First, I'm going to write down the mass of my cap and vial, which is 9.816 grams, in case that comes in handy later. I'm going to zero that and I'm going to add some O nitrobenzaldehyde to it. I want to add about 0.3 grams. Okay, a little over, so we're going to just run with that. So we're going to write down 0.354 grams, like that. And then we want to add about 2 grams of acetone, but we're running a little over, so maybe we'll add a little bit more if we can. But we want to be careful we don't overfill the container. All right, 2.279 grams of acetone. So now we want to take this and we want to give this a shake. We want to get this to dissolve. Always make sure that your cap is on there securely as best you can. It's not as simple as you might hope. And there we go, we're pretty good in solution. So the final thing we're going to do is we're going to add some sodium hydroxide to it. And we're using one molar and we want to add about four milliliters. So here we have our four milliliters of sodium hydroxide. We're going to open that cap carefully. We're going to add that to it. You can see a color change occurring. It's gone from yellow, and then I can feel that this is actually warm. So we're going to make sure that cap is on as tightly as we can. We're going to take that over. We're going to drop that into our hot water bath. So here we've placed this in our hot water bath. One of the things we want to watch for is we want to watch for bubbles coming out of that container. Um, and then other than that, we're just going to let this sit for 15 minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and filter the reaction mixture. So now our mixture is just getting done with uh, going through the reaction. What we want to do now is we want to filter out the indigo. So before we do that, since we're doing quantitative, we're going to go ahead and get the mass of our filter paper while dry. And then write that down, 0 0.303 grams, okay? So what we can then do is we can now take this and filter it, okay? Now, when you're taking the indigo out, it is really important that you heed the warning that it is under a large amount of pressure after being heated up. Um, so if you want, you can go, at the end of this video, there's a time where you can actually see that in action. Now consider that this is a stain. This is something that if you got on your clothes, it would not be good. So when you're opening this, you want to be extremely careful. What we're going to do is we're actually going to put this into some cool water first to get that to cool down before we go ahead and do the filtration. So now we're ready to begin filtering. Again, even after this, you still want to be very cautious when you open the cap. You want to kind of cover it with your gloves so that anything that sprays out gets caught and not onto your clothes or somewhere else. So we now have our indigo dye, and it's mixed with a bunch of other things. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set our filter paper in here. So I got a little bit on my thumb there. And we're going to turn on the water for the filtration system, and before we start, we want to get this sealed to the filter. So we're just going to add a little bit of water. That's going to start the process and hopefully seal down our edges.
So we're creating a partial vacuum in here. That's going to help the water get pushed down in there. Uh, and when we pour in to go on there, that's going to help with that as well. Still want to make every attempt we can to get this in the middle, not the edges. And then you can see that we have a lot left inside the container, so ideally we're going to try and get as much of that out as we can. Uh, to do that we're just going to add some distilled water to this to rinse it. And try and get that in there as well. After that, we're going to let that run through, we're going to rinse, we're going to let it run through, we're going to rinse, and finally we're going to let that dry, and then we should be able to get the mass of our indigo. Uh, definitely won't be perfect, but should be good enough to kind of get some information. So here we have our final measurement. Here is our synthesized indigo dye. Uh, we have 1.674 grams. That includes... 0.303 grams for the filter paper itself. Uh, the other paper towel has just been used to protect the layer of the thing and that's been zeroed out. So now we're ready to prepare the dye to actually stain clothing and what we need to do for that is this is not water soluble so here's about 0.07 grams of the indigo dye that we've filtered and and what we want to do with that is we want to reduce that into a form that is water soluble and then we're going to put the dye into that or put, not put the dye, put the fabric into that and then as that oxidizes from the oxygen in the air then we're going to see it turn back to the blue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this 0.07 grams of indigo dye we're going to add to it 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide We're going to seal that up really nicely and we're going to set this in our 50 degree bath that we have going here. So we want to keep this at 50 degrees, we do not want to see it boil. So I'm going to take some tongs here. Gently set that in there. So we want to set that in there for about five minutes and we can see that it's already bubbling so I need to get that. Take that out. We're going to try that again. We're going to extra turn on there. Okay, hopefully that'll hold a little better. Okay, so we don't want that to heat up past 50 so we're actually going to turn this down quite a bit and hopefully it'll stay around, right now it's at 51 degrees. So we're going to let that heat up on there for about five minutes then we're going to add another chemical to it that's going to cause it to oxid or reduce so that we can later oxidize it. So we're now ready to get our sample out. As always we're going to be very careful not to let it explode all over the place. We're going to let that cool down for just a second. Then we're going to add some sodium dithionite to it. We want to add about 0.5 grams. We're going to set that on there, and zero that, and then quickly as close as we're going to get probably. So we're now going to take this, we're going to cap it back together. Make sure 
make sure that cap is on really tight. Give it a swirl, and we're going to put that back into our 50 degree water. So we're going to let that cook now, and then hopefully what we're going to find is that that's going to go from being this blue color to being a yellow color. That means that we'll be ready to do our staining. So, took a little longer than expected. What we had to do is we had to add a little bit extra of the uh, sodium thionate. Uh, what we have now is we have a little bit, about a gram extra, and also there was a spill along the way. So we're having some problems with that because that's giving us a lot of extra oxygen in the thing. But we're going to give this a whirl and see if we can still get it to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. Now ideally the whole thing is clear rather than just what you're seeing at the bottom here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to here. We're going to open it up. We're going to add it to a solution of sodium diethonate, uh, which has 0.2 grams of that mixed in with just regular tap water. So you can see that yellow color there. And then what we can do is we can just take our fabric and we can set it inside of there. We're going to let it soak for, oh, I don't know, five minutes or so. We'll go ahead and do it just like that. And then we'll go ahead and use some tongs for the rest. Now what's important with this is you definitely want to get it well beneath the surface. You also don't want to stain anything else, you want everything to go on top of there. The reason why you want to keep it away from the surface, here's an old batch that we had before. So you can see there's a layer of blue here at the top, and that's that's where the indigo is reforming as the oxygen reoxidizes it back to the regular form. This is a different reduced form, uh, and so that's why we're seeing a different color. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let that soak, then we're gonna take that out and we're gonna let it sit on here, and it's gonna reform into the blue. So we've waited long enough, we're going to go ahead and take out our sample. We also, I also added a second one in there so we could compare the two. It's important when you take this out not to get any on anywhere. So we're going to take this out and hopefully you can see the yellowish color to it, but it's quickly, quickly fading to blue. I'm going to flip this around so you can see this one. So this one we can still see the yellowish green color. So what I'll do now is I'll take out the other ones so we can see that they're clearly different at the beginning. You can see that color difference, um, especially right in here. Look at, that's the same, I think, as this strip here. But that as time goes on, both of these start to be turned blue from that indigo Dane dye reoxidizing from the air. And there we go. We have synthesized indigo dye and used it to stain different fabrics. So one final time here we're going to take out a piece of fabric that's been dyed. We're going to let that oxidize. 